all the gardening you did was very good as well. Kept you well, fit. Blooming had to be, yeah. yeah. It had to be fit. Because I'd work in the day, look. Yeah. Down potters. Yeah. And I'd come out and dig up at night and plant something. Yeah. And it was yeah. all nice and fresh. Yeah, it was, yeah. And then the weekends off water skiing. That's right, yeah. Hello. Hello, Jack. It's Ali, village agent. How are you? Just ringing to see how you are, make sure you're okay and you've got everything you need, yeah? Julie, how has it been for you having to not be able to do the home visits, for instance? Yeah, the home visits I've missed. Um, I think you miss the closeness with your clients. So when you're on the end of the phone to someone and they're saying, oh, I'm on a really bad day, you know, I wish you could come around and have a cup of tea with me like normal. You just feel your heartstrings pull because you can't actually go and do that anymore. In that first week, we, we, we did uh, hundreds of calls. Mm -hmm. yeah. to touch base so Ali for you again a huge difference mm -hmm. working uh, like Julie it was difficult to explain especially to the very elderly um, clients that why we weren't going around and that they couldn't be the exception you know because you build up such a good relationship with them and then suddenly you're saying you can't go and, and be with them so that, that's quite but what I found is the, the clients that I was most worried about at the beginning are actually the ones that are they're doing okay, they're, they're, they're getting used to this new normal, but the ones that, a couple that were very stoic and very independent, they're now beginning to flag and, and become quite mm. because there's no light at the end of the tunnel. So, and not being able to have eyes on, because they tell you that they're okay on the phone, you hear the words, but their voice is saying, the sound of their voice is saying something different. And I think we knew this early on that we would need to be mindful of the situation around mental well-being, mental yeah. welfare. Mm. Just going out and doing the weekly clapping thing on a Thursday, um, okay. the I speak to yes. regularly, she enjoys that because she sees people and just looking out from her window, she sees so many people just that always give her a wave. Um, I think living in villages, actually that that can help there was a few people who were you know really really struggling with this situation and, and just you know so we all know people like that don't we who literally cannot be at home they, they've got to be up and out the house straight mm. away i mean my mum was always like that she, you know some people just don't like being in the house and don't like being in their own company and without getting too deep about all that but you know that's just what some people are like and i think the mental health issue is is a huge worry and concern um, even for the most stableless of people, if you're completely living alone and uh, just completely isolated in that way, yes, the phone calls are great and waves, but it, it's not the same as having that regular face to face contact if you're that sort of a person. Um, so, yes, the, the people that identify quite quickly are getting the right support from the professionals. One client who, who um, was being supported with mental health issues. Um, and, and I was part of that support. So I was quite worried about him at the beginning of the process and he was very anxious and there was cause to be worried. So we were ringing him daily. But as the weeks have gone on, he's become a kind of village mascot. And so everybody in the village is mindful of him. Everybody is making sure that they wave to him. So, um, so yeah, so he's actually the best he's been for a long time. Aww. It's really good. Yeah, and it's restored his faith in the village, I think, that you live in. Yeah. I've attended two funeral processions in the last month. Um, one was for a friend who'd lost her son, unfortunately, but it's not, nothing to do with coronavirus. And the funeral directors kindly came through his village and then stopped at the pub that he used to drink at with his friends for a couple of minutes. And he lined the streets, even though they were self-distancing, they all lined the, the village and stood there as the funeral car came through. And some threw flowers, some had painted rainbows. And it was just really, really moving, really, yes. Um, yeah, which is a lovely thing to do, you know, the funeral directors taking the time and the trouble to do that. And I think it's closure, isn't it? 
that's the thing. It's the closure of it all for everybody. We've got a dog intervention here. <laughs> <laughs>